Right, here we go. Here we have the former Tory MP Edwina Curry and the former Big Brother housemate Derek Lord. Edwina now works as an author and broadcaster, but from 1983 to 1997 she was the Conservative MP for South Derbyshire and served as a junior health minister under Margaret Thatcher. Uh, since leaving Parliament she's forged a new career as a novelist and somehow endured the wrath of Gordon Ramsay longer than seemed humanly possible in the TV series Hell's Kitchen. Meanwhile, Derek became quite a legend. He came sixth in this year's series of Big Brother, finally being evicted after 71 long days and nights in the house. Prior to the show, Derek was a speechwriter for many well-known conservatives, including Baroness Thatcher and Michael Heseltine. After being on Big Brother, host Davina McCall called him the most popular Tory in a decade. But Derek says he doesn't want to be the party leader. Instead, he's working on a book of children's stories. Now, tonight, Derek's here on behalf of the Dogs Trust, and Edwina is playing for the children's charity NCH. I've never known you two so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? It's good manners. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Derek, why the Dogs Trust? I love dogs. Um, the trust is fabulous. It gets no money from government, no money from the National Lottery. It looks after 12,000 abandoned or stray dogs every year. Okay. Edwina, NCH, you've actually been involved with that for a long time, haven't you? It goes back, Chris, about 30 years. When I was, before I went into Parliament, I was the Chair of Social Services in Birmingham. And NCH had a number of children's homes there, and we worked very closely with them. They, they not only worked with disabled children and their families, but uh, kids coming out of care, for example, who are likely to become homeless, or the families where the children are at risk, and they're one of the most imaginative and innovative. They, mm. they would always say yes and then work out how they were going to help. They were great. So have you two worked together before? Have you written for yes. Edwina? Yes, 20 years yes. ago. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. Have you indeed. written for her? No, 20 years ago we went canvassing Cam in a campaigning. by -election. Yes, we did, yes. Darling Derek came up to Derbyshire. Darling yes, Derek came to Derbyshire. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> I'm not sure what they quite made of you in Derbyshire, but we won the seat anyway. Exactly, so they thought quite a lot of both of us. Okay. At this moment, they are, as always, just 15 questions away from winning a possible £1 million for their two chosen charities. If they get stuck along the way, as always, they have three lifelines to help them. They've got 50-50, they can phone a friend, and they can ask this fine, brand-new, shiny audience. And remember, this might be tricky, actually, knowing these two. They have to agree on all their final answers and the use of any lifelines, including their phone a friend. Okay, lots of luck, Edwina, Derek. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Celebrity Millionaire? OK, lots of luck. Here comes the first question. Question number one for £100. Having declared the couple man and wife, what does the vicar at a wedding traditionally ask the groom to do? Snog the bridesmaids. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a class series, isn't it? Hug the bride's mother. Kiss the bride. Cuddle the best man, Derek. <laughs> well, I would cuddle the best well, exactly. man. Well, exactly. I don't think that. But I don't think that's the answer you're it's, looking for. It's the it's the vicar at a traditional wedding, Derek. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, what do we reckon then, team? Edwina, what do you think? I think that we've got to say kiss the bride. Uh, I think you? it's kiss the bride. Yeah. Thank heavens for that. It's the right answer. You have one hundred pounds. Well played. <laughs> Right, question number two for £200. Let's try and race you up to at least £1,000. You have all three lifelines. This is for 200 quid. Which word is often used to describe the sound of a stream gently flowing? Babbling, cackling, gibbering, <laughs> screeching. <laughs> Edwin, your turn this time. That's got to be babbling, it's please. The babbling brook, you have £200. <laughs> You have £200, question number three is for 300 quid. Which of these is a standard against which something can be measured or assessed? Sofa smudge, chair blemish, seat blot, benchmark. Derek. I think without <laughs> hesitation we've got to say benchmark. Got to say benchmark is the right answer, you got 300 quid. <laughs> Question number four, £500. 
What name is given to an accent with very precise enunciation? Drinking glass, cut glass, broken glass, stained glass. <laughs> I was looking for Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> um, but I think that we know it must be cut glass, don't you think? Would you like to just demonstrate what we're talking about, Derek? Cut glass it is. With very precise enunciation. It's the right answer, you've got five hundred pounds. <laughs> what was that like then? What? Writing for Margaret Thatcher. A bit terrifying from time to time. I made a small contribution to some of her speeches. Uh, not, not, um, not as distinguished as other people, but it was um, enormous fun whilst I was able to help. Scary? Uh, sometimes. Didn't she sometimes say, Derek? Derek? What is this you did here? Yes, there was a bit of that too. But you're very good at doing that too, as well. Oh, darling. <laughs> yes. Ah, me out. Right, you have uh, 500 quid. Question number five would guarantee you two going back to your two charities at least £1,000 better off. You have all three lifelines. I will just warn you, as I always have to, that if you did give me a wrong answer at this point, you would go home with nothing at all. Take your time, have a look. This is for £1,000. Question number five. What does the A of the abbreviation ANC stand for? African, Asian, American, Australian, £1,000. I think that we, we know the answer to that, don't you? I think you? we know I, the answer. I think, I think it's the African National Congress, in which case the answer, Chris, is A African. African. Yeah. That's the right answer. You've got £1,000. Well played. What I don't understand is at what point you're writing speeches for mm. senior politicians, at what point do you think, I know what I'll do, I'll go on Big Brother? <laughs> How did that work? Well, I stopped writing speeches quite a long time ago, although I did work for the Conservatives during the election and I've been in private equity finance. And then I decided I wanted to break free um, after um, my 40th birthday. And I wanted to try doing something different. Well, it certainly was. And it was extremely different, and it was a challenge in a different way. And I like people, and I wanted to see how well I could get on with um, lots of very odd people, and they were very, very odd. <laughs> um, and, I, and, I, and I survived 10 weeks out of 11, so um, uh, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Edwin, I've got to ask you, what was it like for you working with Gordon? How was that? Mm. Bruising? A bit harder than working with you, Chris, but <laughs> so far. So. Uh, it, it was tough. I mean, Derek was lying around doing very little all day except wash his own shirts, which, poor darling, he found a little difficult to do. We were actually working, running a kitchen. Yeah. We were up on our feet at eight in the morning. We didn't get to bed till one. And we were really doing it. We were really getting burned. We were really getting cut. Uh, none of us had any usable fingers left after the end of uh, the first week. So in that sense, it was physically very, very demanding. Right. Now, serious business, because the good thing here is you've got the £1,000 guarantee uh, for the Dogs Trust and the NCH. That's the minimum you go home with. You haven't paused for a second. You've got all three lifelines intact. You are just ten little questions away from £1 million. Now, question number six is for 2000 What name was taken by the Pope who succeeded John Paul II? They're both nodding wisely. Pious, Benedict, Urban, Innocent. I think that we can agree on Benedict. I Con think we Con can agree can on we? Benedict, yes. 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 A very unusual name. There hasn't been a Pope with it's that a name Pope, for yes. a long time. And it's a very pretty name, too. Good, for, think, a, yes. good for a Pope. Good for You're a not Pope. You're jolly good for a Pope. Thinking of giving it to a dog? Well, if I had a son, I would call it Benedict, oh. I think. But that's not likely. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Final answer. Benedict, because it's a pretty name. It's the right answer. You got two thousand pounds. <laughs> Question number seven is for four thousand pounds. You are nine away from one million. That'd be fantastic. Here we go. The world's heaviest bird of prey is what kind of bird? Hawk, owl, condor, kestrel. Um, Let's eliminate first, shall we? Well, uh, I 
think it might be a hawk. Well, I know it's not a kestrel because no, that's, that's really tiny. That's tiny. Um, an owl. I mean, the condor is huge. Yes. That I do know. Yeah. Because that flies over the Andes with these huge yes. wings. Yes. So that's very, very big. That I do know. I think it's either a hawk or a condor. What kind of hawk are you thinking of? I don't know enough about them. Um, because the biggest one is, is the big golden eagle. Golden eagle, yeah. Hawk. I mean, my instinct is that the condor is bigger than a golden eagle because they're absolutely huge. huge biggest wingspan, that I do know, I think. Help! Help, indeed. Um... Do you want to try the audience? Yes. I think, I think we'll ask the, the, the audience. Okay. Okay, it's your call. Right, audience, this is the question, please. All on your keypads, it's worth £4,000. Uh, this is the question. The world's heaviest bird of prey is what kind of bird? Now, A on your keypads is hawk, B is owl, C is condor, D is kestrel. All vote now. Eighty-four percent, huge majority say condor. Eleven percent say hawk, which was originally Derek your yeah. first instinct. Two percent owl, three percent kestrel. Uh, it's up to you. What do you do? I, I think that we go with um, that view. Should we try condor? I think we go for them. Go, go, go with what they say. Yeah. Condor. Final answer. You thought it was hawk at first, didn't you? I did. Still think it might have been? No. <laughs> Quick it's the right answer. You've got four thousand pounds. Thanks to this fine audience. <laughs> right, you have four thousand pounds. You still have a fifty-fifty, and you still have to phone a friend. Um, question number eight. Money are now starting to go up quite steeply, um, but the drops get a bit steep as well. You would lose £3,000 if you gave me a wrong answer at this point. Have a look. Tell me what you want to do. Which of these South American countries does not have an Atlantic coast? Argentina, Brazil, Ecuador, Venezuela. Ah. Um, well, we, we, do we know where, where they are? Argentina is yes, that side. side. Um, Brazil is that side, so that's Atlantic coast. Ecuador, and then you've got... Venezuela is that side, and it has a coast, because I've been there. Ecuador, I don't know anything about. No, I don't know about Ecuador either. Ecuador sort of Central America more, isn't it? Yes. That way or that way? It's not Venice. Venezuela. It, well, and it could be a Venezuela because Venezuela is on the Pacific. Yeah, that's what I think it is. I've flown to Santiago. I have not crossed the Pacific from there. Have you been you... to Ecuador ever? No. Do you know where it is? Yes. Oh, good. But I, I, I think it does have an Atlantic. Coast. You think it has an Atlantic yeah. coast? Then Venezuela would be the right answer. I think so. Then I would go with Venezuela. Venezuela. Should we go for Venezuela? Let's go for Venezuela. We go for Venezuela. Fingers crossed, old boy. Final answer. Yes. Final answer. You had four thousand pounds. Oh, you too! You've just lost three thousand ah! pounds. The right answer is Ecuador. Dash it! Can't oh, start this again. Dash it! <laughs> You said you knew where it was. Well, I think I do. Well, no, you clearly don't. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Ecuador is on the Pacific. Venezuela's on the Atlantic coast. Dash oh, it. Wrong. And you were going, oh, dash it. Oh, dash it. Wrong and you were going wrong. so well. Oh, wow. But listen, still, thank you for coming. You still go away with £1,000. Give her a big hand. Edwina Curry and Derek Lord. <laughs> Bless you guys for trying. I'm really sorry. Oh, what a shame.